Welcome to another video on UK Panda 4x4. In this video I'm going to go through all of the modifications on this silver 4x4 which I've been using for the last three years now in this state. I've lost track of the amount of times that people have asked me what tyres, what suspension, uh, what lights, what roof rack I've got. So this video is going to explain everything I've done to the car uh, and it should answer any questions you've got. I bought the car in 2020 uh, for about £1,600. It's a standard Panda 4x4 with a 1.2 litre petrol fire engine, uh, creating about 60 horsepower. Uh, it's four wheel drive using a viscous coupling, which sends, rear, uh, sends drive to the rear wheels when the front wheels lose traction. driven the car all over the UK. Uh, we've gone to Wales, uh, the Lake District, Yorkshire, Salisbury Plains, all over and you can see the car in action in all of our previous videos. Uh, I built the car specifically for green laning in the UK so all of the modifications are done for practicality to help with green laning in this country. tyres on this car are Malatesta Cobras in 185.75.14 size. Uh, they're very difficult to get in the UK now because of Brexit, but a good alternative is a Maxxis MT764. Uh, these are the same size as the Cobras and uh, do just as good a job. Uh, the wheels are 14 inch steel wheels from a Fiat 500. Uh, you can also get 14 inch steel wheels on, from Fiat Puntos, Ford KAs and obviously Fiat 500s. WillTheyFit.com is a really good place to see if a tyre will fit on your car, but bear in mind that the numbers here only apply to the casing of the tyre and they don't include the tread. These mud tyres came with approximately 10mm of tread, so you need to add that on when you're working out tyre sizes. In order to fit these tyres, I've had to cut the bumpers and the wheel arches, and also the, the lift is also required to make sure the wheels don't contact the top of the arch. Uh, hub spacers were also fitted, so each wheel has a 20mm hub spacer to bring the tyre further away from the car. This is a standard fit Bilstein B4 shock absorber for the front of a Panda 4x4. There's nothing unusual here apart from the paint. The spring is also standard. Uh, the only thing giving me ride height is this spacer here. This is a 20mm lift spacer. It came from a Russian company on eBay, which is obviously no longer available because of the current political situation. Uh, you can also get 30mm spacers, as you can see here, which give you more ride height but introduce other problems. In order to fit the spacer, the nut on top of the shot needs to change for this one here. I remade this in stainless steel to stop it rusting. And this adapter also lengthens the shaft of the shock to enable you to put it through the car and, and tighten everything up. The full assembly looks like this, with the spacer installed. And my hand here shows where the shell of the car goes. So everything below my hands is underneath the car and the wheel arch. Everything above my hand is accessible from the top of the, of the struts. Again for the rear, it's standard Bilstein B4 shock absorbers with standard Panda 4x4 springs. Nothing is different here. The only thing adding height is the spacer visible here at the bottom of the spring. It's a 20mm spacer. And with the tyres, it means this car sits approximately 2 inches higher than a standard car. The spotlights on the front are cheap units from eBay. Uh, they are brighter than the car's headlights, but they only cost about £20 for the pair. They are wired into the fog light connectors, uh, so the fog lights on this car don't work, but the power is taken directly from the fog light connector. Uh, you can see the brackets here of how I mounted them onto the crash bar. Uh, the spotlights sit solidly and they don't wobble or vibrate when I'm driving. The exhaust has been custom made from mild steel, as you can see from the state of it I wish I'd had it done in stainless. It's been modified to suit off-roading with a smaller back box, but it's still just as quiet as the standard system. 
Uh, it's also been bent in the middle to bring it closer to the body uh, to allow for better ground clearance. Before, when with the standard exhaust, the exhaust was the lowest thing on the car, which is the first thing to scrape. Um, so I've had it moved up so that doesn't happen. This catback system was £250 and I was quoted £350 to have it done in stainless. The brakes are standard Panda 4x4 calipers with M-Tech discs and pads. And I've also fitted some adjustable anti-roll bar links to bring the anti-roll bar away from the lower wishbone, which happens when you lift the car. Uh, another issue that happens is the drive shaft will rub on this part of the subframe here when you lift too high. This is the reason why 30mm lifts are not a good idea and it's best to stick with 20 Now the recovery points I made myself, uh, they're my own design based on a weld on swivel shackle recovery point that you can get on eBay. Uh, except these go all the way through the crash panel and bolt directly to the chassis legs. For the, uh, This is the strongest way I could see you doing it. Um, I have towed a VW T5 with these recovery points and there was no movement or bending. Hopefully the pictures here will show you a bit more of how they work. Um, there's more details about this on the, on the Facebook page. The roof rack was again designed and made by me uh, using one inch box section and some uh, stainless steel bar. Uh, it also mounts the CV aerial just with a simple hole at the front. Uh, the main feature of it is a, a spare wheel holder, again which I designed myself um, using an aluminium adapter which fits directly into the middle of the wheel and that screws into an M20 tapped hole in the roof rack which, which holds everything together. Uh, it's super secure and pretty simple to use. As you will have seen on our, some of our videos, my dog likes to come green laning with us, so for that reason I've removed the rear seats and put this cage in to give him plenty of space to lie down and uh, look out the window. Uh, these little hooks here help give me things uh, a strap down point if I'm carrying anything, and the cage can be easily removed to give me lots of space for carrying uh, large items. You can also see a Mark II MX-5 seat on the passenger side. Uh, it's a custom made seat adapter using box section and stainless bar and I'm in the process of doing the same on the driver's side. The CB radio is a cheap unit from Thunderpole. Uh, I fitted it myself with an adapter along with a single DIN stereo so it all fits nice and neatly. The microphone is mounted to this retractable uh, tag which allows me to pull it to my mouth and then let go of it and it stays put and the, uh, the aerial is mounted to the roof rack. When I get the time I will be adding the rear diff from a Mark IV Panda. Uh, this will give me the ability to electronically lock the uh, the front and rear drive. Uh, one of the members on our group has successfully achieved this with his car and uh, it seems like a good option to, to give this permanent four-wheel drive. We are also looking into gearbox modifications to allow for a lower first gear or a lower final drive uh, to enable this to climb steep hills even with the big tyres on. At the moment the gearing is not really suitable for oversized tyres and uh, when things get really steep it is difficult so we're looking at dropping the gear ratios a little bit. And of course the other thing this car is lacking is power, so eventually this will be getting the 1.4 16-valve engine from a Panda 100 horsepower. Uh, we have done this engine swap in another 4x4 and it's been successful, so this car will be getting that engine very soon. I hope that's answered some of your questions about this car. Uh, if you have any questions about anything I've mentioned in this video, the comments section of this video is the place to ask it. Uh, you can also go on our Facebook group, UK Panda 4x4, where I have gone into quite a lot of detail about the modifications on this car. Um, so you can have a look on there. Um, but if you ask any questions on this video, I will answer them. If anyone watching this has a similarly modified car that wants to go through some of their modifications on our channel, then you can get in touch with me and we can look at making a video similar to this about your car. Um, so get in touch with me in the comments below and we can, we can make something happen. Other than that, uh, I hope you've enjoyed watching this, I hope you'll enjoy watching this panda do its thing in the future and uh, keep 
watching our videos and subscribe and like and do all that sort of stuff because it really helps us. Thanks a lot. Goodbye.